Mr. Beast recently launched his own snack company, Feastables, and to promote it in true Willy Wonka form, he's using random bars of chocolate to give away boats, bikes, jet skis, and Teslas. Oh yeah, and there's also the grand prize, the chocolate factory itself. No joke, the actual factory. Dude only got into the chocolate game months ago, and apparently he's already planning for his retirement. As you might imagine, the whole thing has been wildly successful, with people online outright scalping the bars. So with only a few days left to enter in order to win yourself an entire chocolate factory, don't resort to this. I'm gonna tell you the real way to win. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that's given away a lifetime supply of free knowledge. All you gotta do is peel that subscribe button and hey, you may already be a winner. You ever have one of those Saturday mornings when you wake up to find a large mysterious package from the world's biggest YouTuber on your front porch? Hashtag relatable, I know. Well, that's exactly what happened to me about a month ago. So I woke up this morning and found this on the doorstep. What's this about a box? <laughs> this is the thing that got me to turn on the camera. Knowing that he had just launched a new snack brand, Feastables, I had my predictions. My guess is that this is a giant chocolate bar. Nope, with Ollie's help, I was able to break open the box and I could not have been more wrong. Take a guess as to what's in this big This box. looks like a TV box. It does, doesn't it? It's not what's, a TV What is it? <laughs> I'm sorry, is that a bicycle? Meanwhile, held under locking, well, I guess there was no key, it was just under lock, was the chocolate. I suspected that it might be a puzzle that I needed to solve. Well, game on. I think the chocolate is inside, but I have to figure out the code for the lock. I don't know, they're sending it to YouTubers. It can't be that hard. <laughs> okay, maybe I was a little bit harsh on my fellow tubers. Anyway, it was a timed lock, so no puzzle solving necessary. And the rest of the morning was spent munching on chocolate and building a bike. Thank you, Mr. Beast, let's go! So that's how I first learned about Mr. Beast's newest business, but for the rest of the world, it came in the middle of an escape room challenge, where he leads them into a room ripped straight out of Willy Wonka. Gentlemen, welcome to the next level. Drop the chocolate. 10 random bars are gonna have a mystery ticket inside of them, and if you get this mystery ticket, we will fly you out to compete for a chocolate factory in one of our videos. And on top of that, Chandler, we're giving away over a million dollars in other prizes. You wanted a custom PC, a Sea-Doo watercraft, a new Tesla? Those are all possible prizes, but they pay in comparison to the grand prize winner who gets to go home as the owner of Mr. Beast's Chocolate Factory. Because who doesn't want the joy of paying annual property taxes on a large warehouse and being legally liable for health and safety compliance for a fully operational food producer? Truly the grandest of prizes. Obviously, I'm joking. There's something that tells me that the winner is gonna own a percentage of the earnings of the company or something like that. It's not like Jimmy is pulling a Willy Wonka by trying to offload his business due to OSHA violations. Something that we actually explored heavily in a past film theory. But both Jimmy and Wonka are two in a long line of wacky giveaways involving food. If you grew up in the 90s, you might remember this one. Don't eat that Oreo. If you find an Oreo like this, you're an instant cash winner. Don't eat it! Uh, excuse me, Oreos have a design? Huh, guess I never noticed as I inhale them whole like a hungry Kirby. And this isn't just a relic of the 80s and 90s. Oreos decided to celebrate their 110th birthday by doing basically the same thing Mr. Beast is doing right now. Certain Oreo products contain codes that you scan to win prizes like a dream vacation or a lifetime supply of Oreos. Last year, Red Lobster gave away 1 million rewards points to people placing a to-go order. McDonald's Monopoly is a yearly tradition with these sorts of giveaways. But the most famous, or perhaps the most infamous of all of them have to be the Coca-Cola Magic Hands from 1990. I mentioned this one briefly a few weeks back during our space-flavored Coca-Cola episode, but I got a lot of requests from you guys asking for more details, so here we are. While modern giveaways have you scanning QR codes or looking for winning bottle caps, the Magic Hands were cans that looked like regular Coke cans, but were actually fitted with a spring-loaded mechanism that would eject a prize. Sometimes it was cash ranging from $1 to $500, sometimes it was a coupon for vacations or merchandise, and sometimes 
sometimes the whole mechanism didn't work because duh, this was an insane idea. Now, as you can probably figure out, a lot of the weight of a can of Coke is actually coming from the liquid inside of it. So in order to make the prize cans indistinguishable from the regular cans, they filled a separate compartment in the cans with water. But it wasn't just any water. To make it clear that this was water that you should not be drinking, they also filled the can with ammonium sulfate, the same stuff that makes your stink bombs smell like farts. So you pop open your magic can and are greeted with the delightful smell of past gas. Nothing like the sweet smell of victory. Some of the cans started to leak and now you had yourself leaking fart gas water everywhere. As you can imagine, this promo stank. Anyway, mega corporations like Coca-Cola don't spend millions on over-engineered fart cans for the funsies. These sorts of giveaways exist for marketing. And while magic cans may have fizzled, Mr. Beast's chocolate giveaway seems to have found the figurative and literal sweet spot. People are outright scalping these things, charging up to $15 for a single chocolate bar. And people are buying them, which honestly makes no sense since it's not like this is a limited quantity thing. Chocolate is still available via the official Feastables website for its normal price. What you doing, internet? For others, though, it seems like the chocolate is merely a distraction, with people flocking to sites like eBay to sell Mr. Beast Feastables no codes, trying to unload the chocolate after having already redeemed their chance for a prize. To which I say, guys, it's chocolate. What are you doing? You spent $3 on a lottery ticket to win and then you throw away the best parts? But think about what I just said. $3 for a lottery ticket. We live in the United States, a country where it's illegal for private businesses to run lotteries. In fact, US regulators have been cracking down on this sort of stuff since the 1970s. So what gives? This chocolate giveaway is gambling, right? You pay money for a chance to win a prize. Same thing with Coke's Magic Hands or Oreo giveaways or even the McDonald's Monopoly. It's the sort of thing that seems on paper like it should get dinged by the government. And yet, like we just covered, food sweepstakes promotions like this have been going on for decades. Is there some sort of special exemption for food? Is it because the lottery ticket is edible? Well, today we're looking at the legality of lotteries, which at first glance might seem like a random thing for us to cover here on Food Theory, but by the end, I'll be giving you your best and lowest calorie chance at winning Mr. Beast's Chocolate Factory. Let's have someone from the Thiers community take it home. Okay, so when it comes to legally defining gambling, there's a three-point test. The first condition is having a prize. Something can't legally be considered gambling if there's no prize for winning. And this one kind of goes without saying. Anytime Mr. Beast is involved, there are definitely prizes at stake, and this is no exception, regardless of whether it's money, Teslas, or chocolate factories. So the second thing to define gambling is chance. That is, the outcome is randomly determined. This means that a Mr. Beast challenge based on skill, like an escape room or an endurance test of staying inside of a circle, or trying to hit a target with a basketball while dropping it from a helicopter, do not count as gambling. Those are situations where you have control over the outcome based on your own abilities. They are games of skill, not games of chance. Though, when you stop and think about it, dropping a basketball from a helicopter into a basketball hoop, at a certain point it does actually amount to random chance. No amount of skill is actually helping you win that, right? Got so many variables, the odds basically amount to a lottery. Hey Legal Eagle, can you do an episode about this? Where does skill end and chance begin when it comes to gambling? Because also, like, what about poker? Poker is a game of skill. I mean, yeah, you're paying to get in, and the cards are randomly given to you, but there's skill involved with winning a game of poker. The ultimate winner is not about who has the best cards, but about who plays the cards the best. It's weird. Anyway, stepping out of the gray area here, games involving dice rolls, coin flips, spinning of roulette wheels, those are gonna be where gambling laws start to enter. Ditto for any game where you personally don't have the ability to influence the outcome of the game, like betting on sports. Throwing a basketball is considered a game of skill, but predicting which team is gonna win is a game of chance, since you're guessing on an event whose outcome you have no control over. And so again, the Mr. Beast Feastables Challenge falls into this category. Unlike a lot of his other videos, winning this particular contest is simply a matter of buying a candy bar that happens to have the golden ticket. It is pure randomness, no different from the roll of a dice or the spin of a roulette wheel. In fact, if you actually enter a code, the Feastables website outright has a roulette wheel. It's not a real roulette wheel, clearly it lands on no win, way more than the odds of the wheel would allow, but just thought it was worth mentioning. So that's two strikes against it, but how does Mr. Beast's Feastable giveaway fare against test number three? That would be consideration, i.e. that you're required to give up something of value in order to participate. If you're paying for an entry, then yeah, it's gambling. This means that all the giveaway challenges in Mr. Beast's videos aren't gambling. In his videos where he just randomly gives cash to strangers, yeah, he's giving away a prize, and yeah, the people don't have control over whether they win or not, but it's not gambling because those people don't have to pay to participate. In fact, in most cases, they didn't even know they were participating until Jimmy dumps money on them. But with Feastables, 
because it's different. The entire point is that you enter by paying money. Sure, you get a chocolate bar out of it, just like with McDonald's Monopoly and getting a large fry, or with magic hands and you getting some fart water. But the law doesn't care about that. If you're paying money for entry into a contest where you can win a prize and the outcome is left to chance, then yes, it's gambling. So it would seem like the chocolate factory giveaway is illegal here in the US, right? But it, and McDonald's Monopoly, and Oreo giveaways, and magic hands, none of them are getting shut down, so what gives? How are they all getting away with it? What is the loophole? Well, it all comes down to three simple, legally important words, no purchase necessary. Remember that the last of the three legally required elements that we talked about for gambling is consideration. The idea that the only way to win is by staking your own money to pay to enter the game. But if it's possible to enter the contest and win without paying money, then you're all Gucci fam. Take for example the Red Lobster sweepstakes. True, a lot of people entered the giveaway by paying money to place a to-go order, but technically speaking you could win prizes in that contest without paying Red Lobster a dime by downloading the app and registering an account. This means that Red Lobster could advertise the sweepstakes as no purchase necessary, thereby meaning that they didn't meet the legal definition of gambling. True, the vast majority of people entered that giveaway by paying money to place a to-go order, but technically speaking, they could win prizes in the contest without paying Red Lobster a dime by simply downloading the app and registering an account. This allows Red Lobster to advertise the sweepstakes as no purchase necessary, thereby meaning that they don't meet the legal definition of gambling. Ditto for that Oreo sweepstakes. If you click through the official rules, buried within the nine pages of fine print legalese, you find the following statement, quote, there are two ways to enter and play. A, scan a qualifying product package with your device, or B, to enter without purchasing a qualifying product, first visit 110birthday.oreo.com and then follow an entire paragraph of extremely detailed instructions that includes writing a 100 word essay telling Oreo what your most favoritist thing ever in the world to win would be. If you can complete your homework assignment, then you're entered to win, all without spending a dime of your hard earned money on chocolate sandwich cookies. And hey, you could probably repurpose that 100 word essay for class or something. But you'll see is that all of them have what's known as an alternative method of entry, an AMOE, allowing them to advertise the contest as no purchase necessary, thereby circumventing the whole illegal gambling thing. Which brings us back to Feastables. If you've been salivating over those prizes, including the chance to meet Jimmy in person, he's a great guy, you'll love him, and appear in a video viewed by millions of people, well you can do it all without paying a cent to those scalpers charging $15 a bar, or winding up in a situation where you're trying to resell chocolate over on eBay. Viewing the official rules on the Feastables website, we can see a section labeled with the legal terms that we just talked about. No purchase necessary, alternative method of entry, AMOE. To participate without purchase, all you have to do is hand print your personal info onto a 3 by 5 inch piece of paper and just mail it in. And what's more, you can do this up to 2,340 times per person. I mean, that itself sounds like a Mr. Beast video in the making. I submitted 2,000 letters by hand to win a free chocolate factory. Now mind you, this will be an endurance test to your penmanship since in order to be eligible, each request has to be mailed separately in a hand addressed envelope with no photocopied or mechanically reproduced entries, but hey, at least they're not requiring an essay. Seriously, get some friends together this weekend and do it. Well, some people are entering like at most a hundred entries thanks to the hundreds of dollars on chocolate that they're buying. For a few hours of your time, you're going to be submitting hundreds more entries for next to zero cost. No joke, instead of at minimum a three dollar buy-in for a single chocolate bar, you're spending around 60 cents per entry. And these sorts of things do work. When I was a kid, my family actually did this for baseball tickets. There was a big giveaway for World Series tickets and my family spent an entire evening just handwriting envelopes. In total, I think we submitted like a hundred. I was eight, so I contributed about five of those. But hey, we won, and we got to see a World Series game. And for years, I've been convinced that it was one of my five entries that got selected. To be fair though, it was probably disqualified for being illegible, but still, child can dream. Like I said, time is wasting. As this video goes up, you have like three days to get this done. Everything needs to be in the mailbox by April 12th, but that's still plenty of time. In fact, send me videos of you and your friends doing it, at MattPatGT over on Twitter or the Game Theorist subreddit. I'd love to showcase your guys' efforts in a future video or over on GT Live or something like that. Who knows? Maybe a theorist can in fact be the one to take home the factory. And like I said, getting that factory for free? Perhaps that is the sweetest victory of them all. But hey, you know what's even better than a fraction of a chance at winning your own chocolate factory? A guaranteed chance of getting 16 free meals thanks to our sponsor for today's episode, HelloFresh. HelloFresh could get you the meals, Mr. Beast Chocolate can get you the dessert. I gotta be honest with you, don't have a lot of time in my life. Between the YouTube channels and being a dad, there is no 
no time to plan out meals, make shopping lists, go to grocery stores and prep the food. I feel guilty for taking the time for a shower. And you expect me to do all that for my healthy diet? Ain't nobody got time for that. But HelloFresh understands that problem that all of us have and practically does all that footwork for us. All we have to do is pick out what style of meals we want and boom, everything I need is suddenly delivered straight to my door, perfectly portioned out and ready to cook. At most, I need to like chop and mix a few things, which as you've seen on the channel is just the right level of skill I have. We've been using HelloFresh for a while now and we've been getting a lot of the meat and veggie dishes that are perfect for Steph and I, but we decided to mix it up this month with the family friendly plan. So now we're having some awesome burger and chicken nights. It is super easy. You get exactly the recipes that you want when you want them. And best of all, true to the name, it's fresh. HelloFresh has worked hard to ensure that your food gets from the farm to the table in under a week. It's also sustainable. Pre-portioned ingredients mean less prep work for you, and it also means less wasted food. They're also the world's first carbon neutral meal kit company, right down to the packaging they use, which is almost all recyclable. The TLDR here is that your time is valuable. Let someone else worry about the shopping and prep. That way you have more time to eat and enjoy. So if you want to give them a try, you'll get yourself 16 free meals. No, that's not a typo, people. You are getting up to 16 free meals. All you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com or just click the link down in the description and use the code FOODTHEORY16 for up to 16 free meals and thrown in three surprise gifts. Look, you clicked on a video about Mr. Beast. I know you're the type of person who loves surprise gifts and getting things for free, food included. In short, that is HelloFresh.com or click the link in the description, use the code FOODTHEORY16, and congratulations, you are a guaranteed winner of free food delivered straight to your door. Not too shabby. Thank you, HelloFresh, for sponsoring the channel, and as always, remember, friends, it's all just a theory. A food theory! Bon appetit, and good luck. I hope one of us wins that factory.